Hello students, I am Dr. M. Bhushanam, Assistant Professor in Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bangalore. I first of all welcome you all to my class. Hope all of you are safe and fine at home during this pandemic time. Well students, today we shall understand a topic of your syllabus that is unit 3, 3.1 general characteristics of phylum platyhelminthes, its classification up to classes with suitable examples. The main objectives of the study is to understand the unique features related to the phylum platyhelminthes and its diversity to be as flatworms in the given habitat. For this, the content includes general characters of the phylum platyhelminthes and classification up to classes with examples. Well, students, as you all know, our Mother Earth is made up of varieties of living and non-living things. All living organisms is categorized as biotic factors, which includes both microscopic and macroscopic organisms. It was scientists by name Carl Linnaeus who proposed a two kingdom classification of these living organisms. According to him, there are two kingdoms. One is kingdom plantae, the other one is kingdom animalia. Kingdom plantae is further studied by a specialized branch called as taxonomy or systematics. And it was also given by Carlos Linnaeus and hence he is popularly known as the father of systematics. Students later, it was Ernst Haeckel who proposed the next type of classification of kingdom of living organisms, which we call it as a three kingdom classification, where Along with the kingdoms Plantae and Animalia, he included a new kingdom called as Protista. This kingdom includes all eukaryotic microscopic organisms. In later days, it was W. H. Whitaker who proposed five kingdom classification. According to him, Along with kingdom Plantae, kingdom Animalia and kingdom Protista, he included two more kingdoms to it, which includes kingdom Mycota that categorizes the organisms of fungi and kingdom Monera. Now, this five kingdom classification is what majorly we all uh, are following. Well, students, whether it is two kingdom classification, three kingdom classification or five kingdom classification, we find one common kingdom is the Animalia. We need to know something related to this particular uh, classification of kingdom Animalia as a prerequisite. So this forms the basis actually for your actual uh, the uh, syllabus. Now, let us understand the kingdom Animalia. Kingdom Animalia includes varieties of animals varying uh, the sizes of uh, small to large. This group of organisms exhibit 
self movement which we call it as locomotion and these organisms also have a well developed sensory reception activities these groups of animals can be broadly classified or categorized into two uh, groups this is based on the presence and absence of the backbone some animals will have the backbone some doesn't have i repeat some animals will have the backbone some doesn't have the group of animals that have the presence of backbone are called as vertebrates or chordates the other group of animals that do not have a backbone are called as invertebrates or non chordates students remember the title of your paper is non chordata 1 which means non chordates are the groups of organisms which are going to study that doesn't have a backbone you might have studied the examples like uh, amoeba then uh, paramecium cycon hydra tapeworm earthworm and varieties of insects snails starfish etc these are the group of organisms which doesn't have a backbone and hence are called as invertebrates for this semester as i said to you before you will be studying a part of this non chordates are invertebrates to understand exactly the position of the non chordates that we are going to understand today here is the slide which depicts the or which shows the actual classification of kingdom animalia we know that all animals of kingdom animalia are broadly classified into two sub kingdoms this is based on the characteristic feature called as cellularity as we know living organisms are made up of cells and this cellularity you doesn't find in non living things so whenever you call an organism as living they are made their body is made up of cells so that is what exactly it refers here so cellularity is the character based on which we are dividing kingdom animalia into two groups sub kingdom protozoa and sub kingdom metazoa what are the sub kingdom protozoa referring to they are a cellular or unicellular group of organisms a here refers to absence cellular refers to multi cellular or many number of cells so if the body of an organism is made up of many number of cells then you can call or categorize those animals as cellular organisms if you doesn't find this organization of multicellularity you call them as acellular absence of cellularity and they are hence called as unicellular otherwise refers to this organism's body is made up of single cell so all single celled organisms of animal group come under this sub kingdom uh, of unicellular organisms it includes only one phylum which we call it is protozoa as you know examples for this phylum is um, amoeba then paramecium euglena etc then we have the second group of organisms called as sub kingdom metazoa it includes all multicellular organisms so animals other than protozoans falls under the category called as uh, sub kingdom metazoa this metazoans are further, are made up their body is made up of many number of cells so multicellular body they have so this group of organisms of metazoans are further classified into two uh, groups based on the character called as body grade of organization 
So we are introduced with a new terminology, body grid. When we look at this particular concept of body grid of organization, it refers to how the body of an organism is made with. Okay, so it is multicellular, no doubt, but how is their body is made with? So that character, we call it as body grade of organization. So the group of metazoans or subkingdom metazoan, metazoa is further divided into two groups, namely parazoans and eumetazoans. Para means partial, zoa means animals. We know that animals that keeps moving on their own or self-movement or locomotion fall under the category of animalia. Then why do we call them as parazoans or partial animals? These animals in their larval stages will have or in their early stages of development will have locomotion but in their adult stage they lack the locomotion because in the adult stage they attach to a substratum very firmly. So they become sessile, they become sedentary. Huh? They cannot move. So such group of organisms fall under the category called as parazoans. So it includes the phylum Porifera, sponges. You might have learnt in your uh, lower classes. So this is the group of organisms which we call it as parazoans. Then we have understood that this classification is based on the body grade. So body organization. So how are the uh, how is the body organization in parazoans? It is called as cellular grade of body organization. So what does it mean? Cellular as we understood, many number of cells. So many number of cells together contributes for the body organization of these animals. So simply, there are different kinds of cells which are many in number together contribute for this kind of body organization, which we call it as cellular grade, includes the phylum Porifera. The next group of the organisms are called as eumetazoans. So eumetazoans, as you see in the second line of that classification of the slide, you have eumetazoans. So this eumetazoans are the organisms which are said to be true multicellular organisms. I mean to say throughout their life, the organisms at every stage of their life otherwise, the organisms are capable of exhibiting locomotion. Students, it includes the organisms with tissue grade, organ grade and organ system grade of body organization. So we eat tissue means a group of cells which are similar in their structure, function and origin. So group of cells which are similar are called as tissue in simple terms. Group of tissue which forms a particular structure, we call it as organ. Many organs together contributes for organ system. So all these grades of body organization we find in the eumetazoans. Now, the organisms of eumetazoans are further divided into the two groups of grades which we call it as um, great radiata and great bilateria. The third line of that classification in this slide. So this classification of grades is dependent on the character called as body symmetry. So we are getting introduced with one more new concept called as body symmetry. Symmetry generally refers to the division of the body of an organism into two equal halves or mirror images of either horizontal division or by vertical division. So this body symmetry refers to you divide an organism to get two equal halves or of mirror images, we call it a symmetry. If this symmetry we get, mean to say, after the division, if you are able to get two uh, halves of mirror images otherwise with the horizontal plane. 
So if you are able to divide an animal to get two equal halves by dividing them at a horizontal plane, we call it as radial symmetry. And the group of organisms that exhibits radial symmetry are called as radiated. The second group is called bilateria group. This group of organisms will exhibit vertical symmetry or sagittal symmetry. So it is a symmetry wherein the, uh, uh, the symmetrical plane is vertical or sagittal that will divide the uh, two equal halves of mirror images, one on the right side, the other one on the left side. So we find two mirror images of right and left due to the vertical uh, plane of division we call it as bilaterians. Bi means two lateral means the sides of right and left. So this division we call it as bilaterians. Students remember radiator group of organism includes phylum Nidaria cilentareta whose body is made up of tissue grade of body organization and they have the symmetry called radial symmetry. So cilentarates or the group of organisms exhibiting tissue grade of body organization with the radial symmetry. Whereas bilaterians are the organisms which will exhibit the organ, organ system grade of body organization with bilateral symmetry. This group of bilaterians are further divided into three sections. This division of bilaterians into three groups or sections is based on the kind of coelom what they have. What is coelom? Coelom generally refers to the body cavity present between the body wall and the inner body organs are simply we call it as alimentary canal, the digestive canal. So between the wall of digestive canal and the body wall, if you find a space, that space if it is free or empty, you call it a coelom. This kind of true coelom means to say you have a cavity present between the uh, body wall and the inner alimentary canal which is formed by the splitting of the mesoderm. So you know mesoderm is one of the germ layer which is seen during embryonic development. This mesoderm will line the body wall as well as the uh, um, alimentary canal or the inner organs. So this mesoderm will separate the lining for the body wall and the lining for the alimentary canal so that a new space is created in between. So that space is called as coelom. If an animal has got the coelom in it, we call it as coelomate or you coelomate. And to have this, the body of the organism should be bulged. Say suppose, if I compress, we have two surfaces, dorsal and ventral. So we do have lateral surfaces, the sides, the lateral surfaces. If I could stamp my body, if anything uh, uh, gets down and there are slippers, when we stamp it, what happens? It becomes flat, plate-like or leaf-like. Something like that the body of some organisms are. Dorsoventally, dorsoventally, the body of organism is compressed. So this flattening will bring about loss of the coelom within. So there is no coelom present between the body wall and the inner alimentary canal which is lined by the mesoderm. It is totally absent. No cavity is seen. Such organisms uh, are called as A coelomates. A as I said referring to absence. So absence of coelom. Animals with absence of coelom are called as A coelomate. Students understand. It includes phylum, platyhelminthes, commonly called as flatworms. Are you able to understand? So what are pla uh, platyhelminthes group of organisms? They are flatworms. Their flattened nature of the body is due to 
the compression seen between dorsal and ventral side together. Are you able to understand? We call it as dorsoventrally flattened. The next, in between the acylomates and coelomate group, we have one more type of coelom, which we call it as pseudocoelom. The term pseudo refers to false. It otherwise says, coelom is seen, but it is not actual coelom. What is this term referring to? You know that if you want to call a coelom as a true coelom, it should be present between the body wall and the alimentary canal, a cavity, right? A cavity should be present between body wall and the alimentary canal. And this cavity should be separated and lined by mesoderm. Here what happens in pseudocylomates is that, that lining of mesoderm is missing. So you can find the outer ectoderm and inner endoderm yeah, ectoderm inside will have mesoderm, but that mesoderm will not line the region of the, or not separate the region of alimentary canal. So such type of coelom, you will be usually filled with either parenchyma cells or some fluid matter. So some fluid matter will be filled in the space. Such coelom, which is not a space filled with the fluid or the parenchymatous matter, is called as pseudo Coelom. Students understand this pseudocoelomata group of animals includes the phylum uh, Nematoda are also referred earlier as Ash helminthus, which we, which we call commonly as uh, roundworms. Whereas eucoelomata group of organisms whose body has got a true coelom seen between the outer body wall and the inner alimentary canal lined with the mesoderm is called eucelom and this includes the phylum starting from Anilida to Cardata. So this is about the importance of uh, classification. I want to stop. You know why? I want to stop here because this is the aspect that I wanted to uh, teach you for this particular semester. You know, phylum platyhelminthus Phylum Nematoda or Ashelminthus and Phylum Anilida. These are the three phyla that I am going to teach you for this semester. So to introduce these three phyla in the classification of Kingdom Animalia, I just wanted to uh, give this gist. Students understand the importance of acylomates at least now. Acylomates are the organisms which doesn't have a coelom. They fall into the category called as bilaterians. So they have bilateral symmetry. They will have body organization either of organ or organ system grade of body organization. Then their body is made up of many number of cells or multicellular in nature. So this is about the uh, characteristic features of acylomates that includes phylum platyhelminthus with this little introduction, we shall start with the concept of general characters related to phylum platyhelminthus. Students here, as we know, general characters or general characteristic features refers to the common characters that are seen in this group of organisms of platyhelminthus. So platyhelm, when, when I say the, uh, when I make use of the term phylum, it refers to a group of organisms, group of organisms with the similar characters in them. So this group of organism that shares the similar characters called the phylum, that is referring here to the platyhelminthus. So platyhelminthus includes a group of organisms which will share some characters which are in common. Such characters are called as general characters. So before I introduce the general characters, let us understand what this term platyhelminthus refers to. It is derived from two Greek terms. Platys refers to flat. Helminthus refers to forms or worms. So flat, 
worms or otherwise technically called with the name platyhelminthes. So these flat worms are called so as we have understood just now, their body is dorsoventrally flattened. So dorsally, ventrally, they are flattened to have leaf-like structure or ribbon-like structure, a flat body they have. These animals were made up of multicellular condition, mean to say many number of cells it includes. They have soft body. They don't have any protective structures either inside or outside to give the hard uh, hardness for the body or roughness or toughness for the body. So the body is very soft, very delicate and it is not divided into many parts, hence are called as unsegmented worms. Coming on to their habitat where they live, the living style of these animals when you look at, it includes the organisms which are free living. They live in the environment outside. It includes the class of Turbellaria, example is Planaria dugesia. Planaria is the common name, dugesia is the scientific or technical name of that animal. So this organism is an aquatic organism which you find amongst the, uh, 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 the uh, rocks and uh, floating uh, debris underneath the leaves, etc. So this organism is called as uh, Dugesia, commonly called as Planaria. It is a free living organism. Then there are organisms of uh, Platyhelminthes which are said to be parasites. What are parasites? Parasites are the animals which will depend on another organism for their living or sustainability. Here, what happens is that the organism will depend on, uh, the parasitic organism will depend on the other organism for its living. The other organism is called as host generally. And this organism that depends on the host is called parasite. Based on the location where they are, where uh, uh, the organisms of parasites are present, either inside the body of host or outside the body of the host, we have two types of parasites. Number one, ectoparasites. Number two, endoparasites. Ectoparasites, ectomens outside, endomens inside. So ectoparasites are the organism which lives outside the body of the host. Endoparasites are the organism that lives inside the body of the host. Here in the diagram down, you can see a tapeworm attaching to the small intestine of the body of a uh, uh, human. So it is an endoparasite. It lives within the body of the host. Fine students, during this uh, parasitism, we call it as parasitism. Uh, during this parasitism, most of parasites will um, exhibit a phenomenon called as commensalism. Commensalism refers to a close association between the parasite and the host. So two animals are involved where one animal will get benefit without harming the body of the other organism. So when two animals are living together, when one gets benefit without harming the other, we call it as commensalism. So there are examples of flatworms that exhibit the commensalism here. The next character is body symmetry. Students, just now we have understood they exhibit bilateral symmetry. So this is the basic body plan of all flatworms. So when you're going to pass an imaginary a vertical axis in the mid portion of the body, right from the head region to the uh, toe region of the body, or anterior to posterior region, which we call the sagittal plan. When you're going to divide the animal with that vertical axis into two equal halves, then you are going to call that symmetry uh, two equal halves getting two mirror images of the uh, uh, resultant is called as bilateral symmetry. So all flatworms exhibit bilateral symmetry. Then 
the body of the organisms when we look at it is dorsoventrally flattened all flatworms shows dorsoventrally flattened body so hence the body appears to be either leaf like or ribbon like or paper like it is flat flat plate like it is <coughs> excuse me the next important feature is the body of this organism since it is made up of three germ layers they are called as triploblasty the term triplo refers to three blasto refers to germ layers the body of the organism is will uh, is made up of three germ layers of outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm you can see the picture down here the body it is a cross section of the body of the animal of dugesia that is planaria showing the outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endodermal organs tissues so this kind of body arrangement if an animal has whose body is developed from all the three germ layers you call it as triploblastic then the organisms of flatworms shows both organ and organ system grade of body organization I mean to say their body is made up of organs which will perform the individual activities and organ system grade organ system because many organs together work for one physiological function for example here in case of digestive system when we look at it has got mouth pharynx intestine all these three parts together they each one of it is an organ all the three organs together function for the physiology of digestion hence we call it as organ system so we have both organ and organ system grade of body organization in flatworms students remember flatworms are the first animals to develop organ system grade of body organization okay so that's about the uh, uh, body organization of flatworms then the next feature the flatworms show a special phenomenon referred as syphilization syphilization generally referred as formation of head the organisms of flatworms that are referred as uh, uh, free living includes the dugesia or planaria shows the presence of a very distinct head head as we see in the diagram there down it shows a triangular roughly triangular head with two eye spots black eye spots on its dorsal side and two expanded auricles they are nothing but eo like structures expanded structures which are sensory structures eyes are sensitive for the light and uh, auricles are sensitive for the uh, chemicals so both the sensory organs are associated with the head region because inside the head there is a presence of the brain so brain structure and uh, with its associated sensory organs together will help in the formation of the head so that is what we call it as syphilization so formation of head with the sensory organs and brain is called as syphilization which is seen in the organisms the next feature is the body covering students when you look at the body covering of this uh, flatworms it is called generally as epidermis epidermis is very soft and it is made up of special kind of cells which are multicellular but the cells are all fused between two cells we find cell membrane you generally find between two cells a cell membrane it is like this a cell membrane will join two cells this cell membrane between two cells is absent so what happens if for all the group of cells 
one beside the other the arrangement if you lose uh, if you make them to lose the um, cell membrane then what happens the cytoplasm of all the cells will fuse so the layer appears to be multinucleated so here fusion of cells with multinucleated appearance is seen for the epidermis of the organism and this condition we call it as syncytial epidermis it's a very special character related to flatworms syn syn refers to fuse cytos refers to cells fusion of cells leading to the multinucleated appearance for the layer of epidermis is called syncytial epidermis it is also referred to sinusitic epidermis syno refers to um, uh, fusion cyto refers to cells so fusion of cells called as sinusitic or syncytial epidermis so most of the organisms of flatworms exhibit the syncytial epidermis in case of uh, uh, free living organisms you find epidermis showing the cilia because cilia are the locomotory organs you can find the same down in the picture okay cilia are uh, extended outside in case of the parasites the cilia are absent along with the epidermis you have one more outer covering so there is one more special cover for the epidermis in case of parasites and that outer cover is made up of non cellular uh, layers it is multi layer but non cellular it is not made up of cells when it is not made up of cells you call it as uh, dead cells okay the tissue is dead so this layer of dead cells which are seen outside the epidermis which is formed from the epidermis itself students remember epidermis will form the outer layer of uh, uh, um, the organisms which we call it as cuticle what do we call it as cuticle so cuticle is a proteinaceous outer cover which is non cellular or made up of dead cells acts as a protective covering for the organisms of parasites this cuticle will bring in the protection for the animal against the environment of the host organisms okay so that's about the importance of um, the cuticle students remember this cuticle is a flexible layer and also free from that of the minerals well there is absence of exoskeleton and endoskeleton as i told you earlier there is nothing supporting the body both inside as well as outside when there is no support from inside we call it as endoskeleton when there is no support uh, uh, for the organism outside we call it as exoskeleton both are absent for the organisms of flatworms the next important feature is that this organisms of flatworms are called as acelomates as i said you a the term acelomate where a refers to absence coelom refers to cavity present between the body wall and the inner organ lined by mesoderm itself which you can see in uh, the diagram c there so that pink color cells are the mesoderm cells blue color uh, uh, n marks the uh, ectoderm whereas yellow color a deep inner side represents the endoderm so between endoderm and ectoderm that is body wall and the alimentary canal you have mesoderm that mesoderm is getting splitted in case of c and forms a cavity so that is called trochilom so there is a lining for the alimentary canal by mesoderm there is also lining beneath the uh, uh, outer ectoderm that is epidermis body wall this is absent no lining for the endoderm is seen in case of b diagram b so when there is no lining so we call it as a pseudocilom because it will be filled with the fluid whereas in diagram a there is no cavity in the mesoderm at all so no body uh, uh, cavity present between the body wall and the inner alimentary canal 
and hence it is called acylomate. So all the group of organisms under the flatworms are a category of acylomate diagram. A representation will be the body organization of these organisms. The next feature is muscular system. Presence of muscles is important for the body activities. Students remember the uh, muscular system in case of flatworms includes three types of muscles. Circular, longitudinal, oblique or diagonal muscles. If the cells are placed in a circle, we call it a circular muscles. If they are placed in verticals, we call it as longitudinal muscle. If they are placed in diagonals, we call it as oblique muscles or diagonal muscles. So position of muscles will indicate three types of muscles here. So these muscles are present below the region of epidermis that you can see in the diagram down here. So you have the structure of epidermis below contains the muscles of three types, circular, longitudinal, oblique or diagonal muscles. Now we will move looking to the different systems present in, physiological systems present in flatworms. First one to start with is digestive system. Students, every point of general characters what I am explaining you are all very special related only to the flatworms. So all are very important, remember that. Digestive system is incomplete or absent. So whatever I have uh, shown in different colors indicates the importance of that particular character. Okay, please make a note of it when you are going through the uh, video. Digestive system is called incomplete, which means it is not complete. When I say digestive system, it is called complete when it starts with mouth, ends with anus. When it starts with mouth, ends with the anus, I call the system of digestion as complete. Here is the case in flatworms where mouth is present but anus is absent. So I cannot call it as complete digestive system, it is incomplete. So there is incomplete digestive system because of the absence of anus. Then what are all the parts does it include? It has a mouth, it has pharynx, it has intestine. Then what is the function of generally anus? It is the opening through which the undigested waste is ejected out. So the adjustment of the undigested waste of the digestive canal takes place. Students remember, this organisms doesn't have anus and hence through the mouth itself, the adjustment process takes place. Are you able to understand? So mouth acts as the opening both for intake of food and outthrowing of the uh, undigested waste. So that's the importance of the organisms. In case of, I mean this kind of arrangement of digestive system, you will find in uh, planaria. Whereas in case of uh, uh, tapeworm, another uh, example of flatworm, there the digestive system is totally absent. No elementary canal. Are we able to understand? So the digestive system is totally absent in case of uh, um, the organisms of tinea, that is tapeworm. But in case of planaria, it is called incomplete digestive system. Stomach is absent in all the organisms. Pharynx is present. Pharynx is a short tube-like, cylindrical tube-like muscular structure, which is capable of moving out and moving inside the body. Uh, when it moves out for feeding process, we call it as proboscis because it looks like the uh, proboscis of an elephant. You can see the, the proboscis uh, type of pharynx here in the diagram down where the pharynx has come out of the body. So this 
protrusible or a aversible type of pharynx, we call it as proboscis. When it gets retracted back, when it goes inside, the pharynx will go behind the structure of the mouth. So that's the importance of the pharynx. So actual intake of food is done by the help of this pharynx region. As you know, pharynx will lead into the next important part called as the intestine. Intestine in case of uh, the organism of flatworms is said to be branched. There are three branches that you find in case of planaria that we are going to understand in detail when we take up the digestive system in type study of planaria. So remember, intestine is branched into three. And each of these branches further subdivided, subbranchings are seen. So branch type of digestive tract or GERD is another characteristic feature related to the phylum uh, platyhelminthes. So that's about the importance of the digestive system. And the respiratory system is absent because it doesn't involve many of the organs. It directly takes place through the body surface by diffusion process. Circulatory system is totally absent in case of flatworms. The next important feature is the excretory system. Excretion refers to removal of unwanted waste of the body after the metabolism. You know that the food what we intake what we intake into the digestive canal will get broken with the help of enzymes. So this digestion we call it as extracellular digestion because it is occurring outside the cells but within the alimentary canal. Right? Right? So we have extracellular digestion inside the alimentary canal. So similar type of digestion you can also find in these animals. So intestine will pour out the enzymes and breaks the food into uh, 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 digested food. Okay, accepted food. So that food will be absorbed by the next group of cells called mesenchyme cells. Mesoderm is absent, mesenchyme cells are there, those cells will absorb. This mesenchyme cells will distribute the food to the neighboring cells by the simple process of diffusion itself. So after it takes the food, every mesenchyme cells will further break the food into um, the carbon dioxide, ammonia, fatty acids, etc. And re the released energy is utilized. So the food after its breakage inside every cell, every cell, we call the process, it, uh, process as intracellular digestion. I mean to say within cells the cellular digestion is taking place. That will lead to the formation of water, ammonia, carbon dioxide and some fatty acids. Students remember these uh, uh, products are called as excretory products. Water is the excretory product, ammonia is the excretory product. Carbon dioxide is the excretory product and few fatty acids also. And these cannot remain within the cell because the cell will be poisoned, it will die. Hence, there is a system involved to remove this excretory waste. So water is removed, carbon dioxide is removed, ammonia is removed, fatty acids are removed by using a system which we call it as excretory system. Like how our kidneys will function. The urinary system will function to remove all the excretory waste from our body. Similar way you find the excretory system in flatworms also. Here special cells are there to take care of the function of the excretion. They are called as flame cells or flame bulbs. They are also called as solenocytes or protonephridia. They are all the synonyms, same names. What are these cells? Can you see a diagram down separately? It has got protoplasmic extensions which will absorb that waste, excretory waste. It is a flame cell. It will take inside 
and this cell has got a cavity within we call it as intracellular space or cavity and this cavity has got number of cilia row of cilia flagella in it these cilia will start moving together all moves together when they all start move, moving together it looks like the flickering flame you could have seen the candle when the air blows on the flame of the candle it starts moving right something like that the cilia will also move hence they are called as flame cells are you able to understand here this movement of the cilia will create a hydrostatic pressure a pressure for the water and all the waves to enter into the cavity of the flame cells from there it is connected to many number of excretory ducts and those excretory ducts on the other side towards the dorsal surface will have minute openings at the margins they are called as dorsal pores or excretory pores or nephridio pores there are different names that we give for the so openings through those openings the waste will be thrown out so this is a very special system that you find in case of the organisms of flatworms students remember which are the excretory units for the excretory process in case of flatworms it is the flame cells or solenocytes or protonephridia coming on to the nervous system nervous system of the organism is very special again i have mentioned two diagrams depicting the importance of um the nervous system it has got inverted v shaped brain which is made up of two lobes two lobes of brain are seen which is of inverted v shape like this from which arises many number of branches in the head region some moving front some moving lateral sides giving it sensory activity i said it is uh, um, i mean the head is associated with the eyes and the auricles so this nerves will connect some with the eyes some with the auricles they are uh, 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 chemosensitive chemoreceptor uh, sensory activities this uh, auricles have got so that's the about the brain from brain two lobes of brain each of the lobe there arises a long longitudinal nerve made up of many number of neurons they are called as longitudinal nerve cords what you call it as longitudinal nerve cords you have brain the brain uh, at its down or posterior side shows the presence of two elongated nerve cords the two nerve cords are called one right the other one left so right and left nerve cords are there these two nerve cords are joined transversely horizontally by means of one more group of nerves which we call it as transverse nerves so we have brain the longitudinal nerve cords and transverse nerves at the junction of the transverse nerve with that of the longitudinal nerve cord this junction towards outside shows another branch that moves which we call it as lateral nerves a peripheral nerves so overall the nervous system alone when you look at it is present towards the ventral side of the body of the animal and looks like that of a ladder ladder and hence the nervous system of the organisms of flatworms is generally called as ladder type or ladder like fashion nervous system this is another special feature related to flatworms then coming on to the reproductive system this is again a special feature related to flatworms students remember the organisms of um, flatworms are said to be monoecious or hermaphrodites mono means single each your refers to home so you find the organism a single organism possesses both the male and female reproductive organs in them or gonads in them such organisms are also called as bisexual organisms or hermaphrodites hermaphrodites refers to organisms whose body 
possess both male and female reproductive gonads. Sometimes the male reproductive gonads called the testes will have maturation first. Such conditions is called a proto androus type. Proto means first, andro refers to testes. So maturation of testes will occur first. We call it as proto androus type. In another group of organisms, we will find proto gyne type. Gyno refers to female reproductive system. So whatever it is, both the male and female reproductive organs called gonads are present in the same animal. So that's the another special feature related to the organism. Now, the organism of um, organisms of flatworms show reproduction and produces the eggs. The eggs will have the yolk, the reserved food materials, which is covered over by hard shell. Say suppose the organism has got unfavorable conditions where it is not getting the proper food to eat, no nutrition. In such condition, the organisms will stop reproducing and start eating away all the reproductive organs. So there is slowly disappearance of the uh, gonads because it is fed by the organism itself. During onset of favorable condition, when it gets the food of uh, a bulky quantity, then it starts reproducing the last parts. Are you able to understand? So during the uh, uh, unfavorable condition or famine condition, it starves. During starvation, it will eat away all the reproductive organs. During onset of favorable condition, it will reform the last parts which we call it as power of regeneration. So it's very standard, which is very high seen in case of a, a planaria, power of regeneration. Since it's a free living organism lives inside the water, huh? uh, when it undergoes starvation, it shows uh, this kind of phenomenon in it. Well, the fertilization, fusion of male and female gametes occurs inside the body of the organisms, hence it is called internal fertilization. After fertilization, we get the zygote. The zygote may directly develop to form the complete organism or sometimes may form the organisms called as larvae. If larvae are formed, which is commonly seen in parasitic organisms, we call the development as indirect development. Students remember, in the life cycle of an organism, if you find the mother organism uh, forming the larval stages, then the development is called indirect development, which is commonly seen in parasites. Whereas in case of free living organism, the development is said to be direct, I mean to say, the mother organism directly give birth to the young ones. Here is a picture down showing indirect development related to the liver fluke or fascula hepatica. So with that we are completing the general characters related to phylum platyhelminthes. Coming on to the classification of platyhelminthes. Majorly there are three classes uh, a scene for the phylum platyhelminthes, namely Turbularia, Trematoda, and Cestuda. Turbularia includes the organisms that are free living and aquatic. It includes the example of Planaria, which is scientifically called with the name Dugisia tigrina, that is the scientific name of the Planaria. Trematoda are the class of organisms which includes endoparasites with only suckers but no hooks. They will have only sucking kind of organs, but parasites. Example, liver fluke, a scientific name of it is Fasciola hepatica. The third group of organisms or class of organisms are called Cestuda group. It includes parasites with both hooks and suckers. Example is your tapeworm. Scientific name of this animal is Tinea solium. 
So with this we are completing the organisms of flatworms related to general characters as well as classification with examples. Well students, let us test the uh, understanding ability of us. How much exactly you have followed the concept of phylum platyhelminth, this general characters and classification. Here are few multiple choice questions. Let us see how well you are going to answer. Question 1. Flat worms are. How is their body is? Diploblastic, triploblastic, monoblastic and none of it. So you know they are all triploblastic because their body is made up of three germ layers. So answer is B. Second question. Coelom in flatworms is very well developed, poorly developed, schizocelous or absent. It is absent. Answer is D. Question 3. In which is free living freshwater flatworm? Hmm? Planaria. Good. A. In platyhelminthus, now cuts are present, now cuts are absent, now nets are present, now nets are absent. Which is the right answer. Now cuts are present. A. Animals belonging to platyhelminthus are also called as flatworms because the head is flat, they have dorsoventrally compressed body, they creep over the surface and their elementally cannot be flattened. The right answer is B. The body is dorsoventrally compressed. Next MCQ. Liver fluke belongs to the class. Cestoda, tabularia, trematoda, nematoda. So C, trematoda. So what have we learned from today's class? We have understood the general characters of phylum platyhelminthus and how their characters or features in them helps them to sustain in the environment where they live. Students, for the reference, you, uh, the web references are Wikipedia and Britannica.com. And with book references, you can follow Invertebrate Zoology by P.S. Verma or Modern textbook, zool uh, textbook of Zoology by Kotpal. Thank you all. Wish you all a very good day. Students, if you have any doubts and queries or comments, please post to my personal WhatsApp number. Thank you all. Thank you all.